So there's a lot of discussion about dual batteries on the Kepler. I've kind of exceeded my 30 mile range, so I'm, I was ready for one. I thought about getting a second battery that I could just plug in when I needed it. But decided to go ahead with the dual battery with a combiner set up. It seemed like it was really the best way to do it. There are other people who have made videos on how to do this. Randy Rides has a good one that's simple on the wiring and the parts needed. I'm not going to go into that because he already has. I'm just going to show how I installed this and why I did it so that you can have other options when you're thinking about doing your own. First you can see I've mounted it behind the seat. I did that to keep it as close to the center as I could since it's pretty heavy. I didn't want it out hanging on the back. Also I don't want long wires to have voltage drop so this keeps it as close as I could to the controller. And all the wires are very short. I've covered it with quarter inch foam flooring material basically. It comes in a roll. I happen to have some already. I mitered the corners and glued them with super glue. And the corners that are bent I v-grooved on the back side so it would fold better. I used a router bit on a drill press and slid it through underneath. Before we go into the wiring, I'll show the skid plate I made. It looks a lot like the Rad Rover skid plate I saw on eBay, but I basically made it myself uh, using a prototype and it ended up looking about the same thing. You can see that it protects the pedaling sensor cable that's right behind there and in a very vulnerable place. Uh, the wires, it's also protecting all the wiring, new and the old. I used 12 gauge copper silicone coated wire and I ran the wires up behind the controller, which is what you're seeing there. The controller bracket has a little corner cut out, just big enough for the wires. So that is the controller cable itself, the original, I didn't even extend it, running right up to the battery combiner, right there mounted on the bike frame. I made a plastic mounting bracket out of some thermoplastic that you buy in beads and melt in hot water and shape into the right shape. So that conforms to the tube and to the combiner and a tight enough fit to use mounting tape to hold it together. On the other side the wire from the original battery comes up behind the controller bracket through that same gap in the corner and right up into the combiner again. Very tidy and keeps them out of the way. It was difficult to deal with them hanging there while I reinstalled the controller so I tacked them into the corner with super glue which held them in place long enough to put the controller back up without them getting pinched or anything. The other wire here is from the new battery runs up along the frame to the new battery Right at the moment it straps to the frame with some, a strip of rubber inner tube. Back behind here is the charging port for the new battery, which I covered with a little tube of 
inner tube with the rubber end on it. Uh, I just put a bike roo seat on here with some springs. You can see that it fits with plenty of room for the battery behind it. I'm about 5'9", so the original seat also fit, but that metal handle that hangs out underneath it was right down against the battery. Um, and of course there are no springs on that seat. So this doesn't have the handle, the seat is higher so it has more room. And there's about an inch gap in there for the springs to move. The battery is held down with two aluminum brackets on the left back side, they are shaped into a U that hooks under part of the luggage rack and in the front they are into an L and are screwed into the luggage rack mounts. So two screws and the battery comes off and it's very secure. I only had to move the basket back about three quarters of an inch from where I had it which I moved back to get it out of the way when I was riding it. So I like that setup. I think that's really tidy.